Hello, this is Matsi back with another Matsi Minutes. Today I'm going to be working on key inputs in Smile Game Builder. This is actually the precursor to a larger tutorial I will be showing on how to do menus. And I'm going to show you what the menu looks like, and then I want to talk about just how the key input works in this system. So this is my MakerBase SGB, and I have a character here that lets me enable a custom menu. When I hit the escape key, which would be normally the menu key, I get these boxes up here at the top left. And you can see I have a selection box I can move around. These boxes could be anything I wanted them to be. They could be characters, they could be monsters, they could be items. I can have more than what you're seeing here. It's all up to what I want to set up with my menu. Now, we're not going to go over this menu in this tutorial, but I will show you how you can capture input and do some of your own fun custom things with the system. So first we're going to start with common events. So you see here that I have key events. When you want to capture a key, the first thing you have to do is put it into a variable. So I use this advanced variable op box. As you may have seen in previous tutorials, you can get to that here with this little box like item and you can see advanced variable op box. If I open one of these up, you can see I want to assign this to a variable. In this case, I have one called key input up. And then in the how section, I want to select key input. In key input, there are many different things that you can actually input. We have up, down, left, right. These are all the arrow keys. There is the side, which is the space bar, or I believe enter or the mouse click. This is cancel, which is the escape key. I believe there's another key as well. Uh, dash, which is the shift key. Switch viewpoints and camera rotation, they're all different keys that exist on the keyboard for the player's interaction with the system. So for my maker base, I've actually set up input for every single possible key. This is going to be useful for any game developers that may want to just have a quick reference to all the keys they may want to access. Now, if I want to make use of these keys and I want to capture key input, I can make an event or a check and check that variable for some sort of input value. Now, because I want to help people understand how keys work, I also want to show you something really useful that sometimes gets overlooked with the Smile Game Builder toolset, and that is this help button. This is actually quite useful. The Smile Game Builder tool comes with its own help manual. So we're going to open up this manual and take a look at the page that shows us about key input. So you can see in this manual on page 74, they have something about advanced events, which actually gives you some more information on the options in advanced events, and they have key input. So any of the values that you can get for key input have different values they can be at any given time. You can either have one, which means the button is actually being pressed, it's being held down. You have two, where it is, it's initially being pressed, so it only captures the initial press and it happens very quickly. And then you have negative one when the key is released. So with these values, you can actually check to see whether the key is being pressed or it's being held down or it has been released. And that gives you a lot of options. I believe it will be zero if nothing has been pressed or released. So I'm going to do something different than I normally do this time. Usually I have scripts pre-prepared and I walk you through it. This time I'm going to create a script that interacts with some of my key events. For this, I can either go into edit game data and add a common event. Or if I wanted to do something that was specific to a map, I could add a advanced event to the screen and I can set this to automatically start synchronized and repeated to capture user input. So I'm going to do that because I want this to be specific to the map. First thing I'm going to do is do insert event panel. And then I'm going to go to check variable box. And in here, I want to scroll down and find one of the key inputs I want to use. We have all these options here. I am not going to do cancel because that's what my menu does. So why don't I do decide? This will be if I hit the space bar anywhere on this map. Now this won't make my map work very well, but at the same time, it's only for demonstration purposes. And I'm going to want to capture when the key is initially pressed. This means when you hit the space bar, this will trigger the action to happen. And now in here, I'm just going to add something that puts a message up on the screen. Now, what's interesting about the way this works 
with Smile Game Builder, if you have a variable that equals an input value, and then you check for that value and take an action, it actually overrides whatever the default functionality is. That means with my menu example, I overrode the cancel button, which is also the menu button. And when I hit the escape key, the normal menu doesn't come up. Instead, the menu I made comes up. That's the same thing with the spacebar or any of the other keys. So SGB has basically a built-in way to override key presses. Let's test this out. So here I am, I'm just going to hit the space bar now. And you can see it says you press the space bar. I can either have common events or I can have events on my map. I can have it as synchronized and repeated. I do need that because it needs to be able to pick it up anytime the key is pressed. And I can do whatever I want inside of this. In the case of my menu, I actually make heavy use of display image. So I can display any image I want on a key press, and that means conceivably I can create my whole system for making a menu. Even though I'm not going to go over the entire menu structure, I will show you very quickly what it looks like in case you're curious. As you can see, I intercept the key input cancel button, and then I do a lot of stuff. There are many elements to this, and it's much better off for a longer tutorial, but to get started, I wanted everyone to know just how easy it is to override key events. And so you could do your own sort of interactions with the player without relying on the SGB default behaviors for these keys. That's it for today's Motsi Minutes. I wanted to keep it short because I have a bigger tutorial on its way. Keep a lookout in the next few days and I'll have more to show of that custom character selection menu. Check my description below for other helpful links and I will see you next time.